Hello and welcome to our Good Friday service. As we look to the cross and see our Savior suffer for our sins, let us now begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Week draws to a climactic finish as we focus on our suffering Savior carrying his cross to the place of crucifixion. Our sins and the sins of the world press down on him. His body is beaten and broken. His hands and feet are nailed to the cross. It is a sorrowful picture, yet one that brings us hope. For at the cross, Jesus made the payment for our sins. Watch closely. And listen carefully today as we read the details of this wonderful truth. The cross upon which our Savior was crucified is the intersection of God's justice and his mercy. So let us begin our worship where we will contemplate the details of that first Good Friday and ponder what our Savior's act of love means for us and for all mankind. We now contemplate the darkness of our sins. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. As we approach the cross of Christ, we confess our sins to God. Precious Savior, The darkness of your hours on the cross surrounds us. It is a darkness caused by the sin of the world. It is a darkness caused by my sin, by my thoughts, words, and actions. I have clung to the darkness of sin. Yet because of your love for me and in obedience to your Father's will, you humbled yourself to the point of death on the cross. Hear my cry for mercy for the sake of your holy precious blood and your innocent suffering and death. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all all sin. Christ Jesus is the light of the world and the atoning sacrifice for our sins. By his death on the cross, he has removed your guilt forever. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. During the service today, we contemplate Christ's cross and crucifixion by reading from Matthew chapter 26 and 27. First, we see our Savior was convicted. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ suffered many things on our behalf. He was spat on, slapped, and stricken. He faced all these things for us. He stood in front of a kangaroo court in which they conjured up charges to lay against him. But what could they charge him with? Jesus had done nothing wrong. 
he had not sinned, not one single time. So there Jesus stood before the Sanhedrin, the high priest, the teachers of the law, and the elders, as they made allegations to put against him. But finally, the reason Jesus was convicted was not due to these allegations. Their final accusation was real. Jesus was charged with claiming to be the Son of, the God, of God. And that is true. Jesus certainly claimed to be God's Son, the Messiah, because that's exactly who he is. Jesus stood there convicted. Convicted for being the Messiah. Convicted for being God's son. Yes, Jesus was convicted to death. Because he was the Messiah. Because he is God's son. But it is for that very reason that Jesus faced this punishment. Here we see Jesus convicted. We read, Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death. But they did not find any. Though many false witnesses came forward, finally two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Denied. Lord, even if all others leave, I surely will not leave you. Peter, the spokesman of the disciples, made this bold proclamation. Peter, who stood on the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter, whom the Lord called Rock. Peter, who made the proclamation of salvation through Jesus, did he still not get it? Did he really think Jesus would be wrong? Jesus told Peter about the denial that he would later make. And of course, Jesus was right. Jesus is the Son of God. Peter would deny him. But Peter couldn't have gone up with Jesus. Jesus had to do this on his own. 
And Peter wasn't alone. All the others denied Jesus too. Jesus was denied by this whole sinful world. But it was for those sinners that Jesus had to die. Jesus died for their sins. Jesus died for your sins and my sins. Jesus died for Peter's sin of denial. Here we see Jesus was denied. We continue reading. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you are talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately, a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Sentence. Earlier, we saw Jesus was convicted on the charge of claiming to be the Son of God by the Sanhedrin. But the Jewish leaders faced a problem. They did not have the power to put someone to death. So they needed to bring Jesus before someone who did have that power. They brought Jesus to the Roman governor of the area, Pontius Pilate, on three accounts. Inciting a rebellion, refusing taxation, and blasphemy. Now, Pontius Pilate could see that these charges were lacking, but he was afraid of the Jewish leaders. So he tried to make a deal with them. But the Jewish leaders had their minds made up. Jesus was guilty in their eyes. Pilate tried to offer up a murderer in Jesus' place. But the murderer was set free. And Jesus was sentenced. We continue reading. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah. For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, 
his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man. For I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Mocked. Jesus suffered many things on our behalf. He was convicted in front of the Sanhedrin. He was denied by his closest followers. He was sentenced to die. And on top of all of that, he had to face torment and ridicule. Jesus faced mockery. What sad irony that Jesus, who as very God of the universe, humbled himself for us, was set to face people who tried to humiliate him. Here we see Jesus was mocked. We continue reading. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him. They took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Crucifixion is a prolonged form of torture and death meant only for the worst of criminals. And Jesus faced that punishment for us. Now there are two main theories as to what eventually kills the condemned through crucifixion. Heart failure and the inability to breathe. What sad irony it is 
that Jesus, who as very God, breathes the breath of life into all of creation. And because of his immense love for that creation, took this spot on the cross, died in this fashion. Yes, Jesus was crucified as if he were a criminal. But it is not for his sins that he was crucified. It was for our sins. Here we see Jesus crucified. We continue reading. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above him, there placed the written charges against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. died. The punishment for sin is death. Ever since the first man, Adam, fell into sin, God proclaimed this punishment upon mankind. Throughout scripture, this truth is evident. The punishment for sin is death. The wages of sin is death. We see this time and time again through the Old Testament when the sacrifices were given. Each time a sacrifice was given, blood was shed. Animals died. God proclaimed this punishment for sin. Then God himself took that punishment upon himself. Here we see Jesus, the Son of God, died. Here we can say that God died. We continue reading. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and it offered it to Jesus to drink.
We pray. Heavenly Father, you are a just God who accepts nothing less than perfection. All too often we fail to realize how much our sins offend you and how dearly it costs you. We forget that the wages of sin truly is death. We forget that there actually is a hell. Lead us to recognize the seriousness of our sinfulness. Lead us also to admit we are completely incapable to make things right with you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for paying the debt that we could not pay. We thank you for coming to earth so that we could be with you forever in heaven. You offered up your body as an unblemished sacrifice for sin and commended your spirit into the hands of your Father. Give us the courage to face death, knowing that it is the gate to our home in heaven. Dear Savior, we humbly kneel at the cross in awe of your power and love and join our hearts and voices in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Buried. Our Lord's body is buried. We finish our reading. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in cloth, and placed it in a new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Eternal God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, help us to always be aware of the events that caused Jesus to be taken to the cross as we recognize our sins that, that caused the crucifixion. Grant us forgiveness and cleanse our lives of sin. Uplift us that we might see beyond the shadows of the cross and find that our hope of life and salvation is in him who came as the light of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, It is finished.